Hello world of YouTube. Today, can we just acknowledge the baby hair that's going to stick up this entire video? It is what it is. Today, I want to talk to you guys about some things that saved me as a first year teacher. <laughs> or just when I started out teaching. Um, the routines and things I'm going to show to you are things that I found to be really effective with my kids, their rules, routines, procedures, um, just little tips and tricks that have proven to be really effective for me and things that I have used from year to year. So stay tuned if you are interested. First thing I want to show you is on my computer. We all have smart boards or Promethean boards. Um, posted groups is something that I have found to save me. So I'm going to show you what my flip chart looks like for groups. So these are reading small groups. I also have picture directions for what that group does first and what they do second. So first they independently work, second they come to their small group table for the kids um, who maybe aren't reading fluently yet. Picture cues and visuals are really helpful. Um, however, we are to a point in the school year where my first graders can read basic instructions and of course I always go over it with them first. Um, lists, things posted on the board, super effective because then you're not having to explain and re-explain and re-explain to kids what they're supposed to be doing. If a kid comes to my small group table while I have a small group and they're supposed to be working independently and they say, Miss Payne, what are we supposed to be doing? I don't even give them eye contact. I literally just point to the board um, and then they take it from there. I'm not one to repeat myself, so all my directions are posted. Um, I do flexible seating, so I have pictures, again, visuals for where kids are working and what day of the week they're working there, so I leave that up along with a little timer in the corner of how long we have to work for, and my timer looks like this. So we do 20 minute reading group rotations and then you quick set. And I like this because, um, again, it's just a nice visual. The elapsed time shows up in black and then the time remaining shows up in yellow. So the kids can kind of get an idea um, of how much time they have left. My classroom runs on timers and then of course you can minimize it put it off to the side, and then everyone knows where they're supposed to be. Um, kids whose names aren't posted up there, it is implied that they are working either at a small group table or at their spot, and they know that. Um, I have the same, this, these are our words, their way groups. Um, again, visuals and math groups. Again, you know, groups, and then um, where they're supposed to go. Flex seating spots for their iPads, which we do during math. Um, so yeah, that would be my first recommendation, is make flip charts, visuals, lists, groupings, um, to avoid students coming up and asking you the same question over and over again. My next piece of advice would be uh, things that students reference often keep at student level. So these posters we reference a lot. We keep that at student level. Um, I would also recommend having um, the basic necessities that you're going to reference at your small group table near your small group table. So what I mean by that is this hundreds chart gets referenced a lot. Kids can get up and do what they need at the hundreds chart or reference it from their spot. Um, these posters get referenced a lot for reading and it's back here already so they're not having to move around the room to get what they need when they're at my small group table. I want them to stay here obviously so I have what they need already back here for them down to pencils. They don't even need to bring their own pencil. I have my own back here for them. Whiteboards markers, scissors, glue, um, things that we use often are all kept back here. Um, and then if they're working independently, I let them have the flexibility to move around the room to um, reference what they need. 
if they need the date they know they can find it right here I have them date you know all the work on their paper where it's their way is within student reach um, books are within student reach manipulatives if we need them um, and then of course I very intentionally put things out of student reach that I do day to day I'm in charge of changing the calendar that's out of student reach um, staplers out of student reach that's my job um, yeah so just do that with intentionality would be my second piece of advice student self-assessment I have found to be really powerful and it's something I use every year um, after each core content area for me you can self-assess or have the kids self-assess whenever but for me I have them do it after core content um, they are able to give themselves a score out of four. I have them show me on their heart how they did, and I explain to them that their score is between me and them. So after um, they score themselves, they can't boast about, oh, I got a four today. You know, it needs to keep to themselves so that other kids don't feel bad that maybe didn't get a perfect score. Um, it promotes student self-reflection um, and the kids really like it year after year. It's been really effective. And my rule is I have to agree with your score. So if a student rates himself a four and I'm looking at each of these four points and I think to myself, well, you didn't clean up quickly. You came to the carpet late. I'll, th I'll say to them, <coughs> you know, think about the score you gave yourself. Do you think that's accurate? I'm just remembering back to when you came to the carpet late. And then a lot of times, you know, they'll take down a finger. Uh, my rule of thumb is be honest with yourself or I'm going to be honest with you. So we need to come to a consensus on their score. Um, obviously, each of these points is worth a point. So if they did all four of those things, they get all four points. If they did three of them, they get three points, etc. And then I record how they did on a clipboard. And I do that all week. And then students who get fours all week across... Um, academic areas they get to choose what they do first for Friday fun so would recommend student self-assessment I have done it every year and I found it to be really effective my last oh the lighting fine <laughs> The last piece of advice I would give you that I have done more and more each year, but I wish I would have just done it from the jump my first year of teaching, is um, just releasing responsibility to the kids. They are capable of so much more, I think, than what we give them credit for. Um, it amazes me how picked up and clean and organized my kids keep this room I feel like I don't have to stay after very long after the kids leave at the end of the day because everything is nice and picked up and that's because I set that standard and that precedent that this is the way we keep our room period because it's important that we stay clean and organized so that we're able to jump right into our learning I don't like to waste time um, you know, fishing through trying to find things because we have a mess here. You know, we keep clean and organized. Um, and the kids just do it. You don't have to harp on them. You don't have to give them several reminders. Um, they're just able to take on and be responsible for a lot. So don't underestimate that. Set the bar high and watch them meet or exceed your expectations. Um... It's a really cool, positive thing. And you know, I tell them, I'm not always going to be around to give you reminders. And I don't know if you can hear the yelling next door. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm not always going to be around to help you guys, you know, through these day-to-day -day tasks. It's important that you learn how to be responsible now. And that's something that we're going to practice in here. And... They really don't question it or challenge it at all. They just do it. It's really cool. Other than that, I'm trying to think of other things that I'd share with you. Um, find an effective system for you on how to stay 
organized. I feel like that just saves my sanity. I'm, but like I've said in other videos, I'm like very type A, so I like to know where all my materials are at all times. Um, I don't like the feeling of like, oh, crap, where did I put that sheet that I was gonna copy? Or, oh, I set this activity down somewhere and now I can't find it. Everything has a place. Um, when I was a first year teacher, well, I took over for a class mid-year, so it was really overwhelming, and um, things just weren't very accessible. I'm like super efficiency-minded, like I said, I don't like wasting time. Um, and so over the years, I've just found ways to make um, my classroom space really accessible, kid-friendly, uh, have a nice flow to it. When you're setting up your room, uh, you know, something that's really helped me in setting up my room is, you know, where are the big traffic points going to be in the room? How are the kids going to move in the room? Um, I like kind of an opened up feel where I can see everyone. Um, and so those are good things to keep in mind. How do I want things organized? How am I going to access those things? Like I said with the small group table earlier, you know, okay, what do I need easy access to at my small group table? Okay, that'll kind of guide, you know, where I put things. Um, you know, what texts do I want my kids to have easy access to? And what texts am I going to be reading aloud to students? So maybe they don't need easy access to those. What materials are, we, are the kids going to be using every day? Um, how should they access those? How should we keep those organized? Just really putting a lot of thought into that will save you a lot of headaches later on. Um, I've shown you these before, but I have like colored crayon buckets. I'll show you now back here. Each crayon bucket has a different color and that saves me a headache because, you know, at the beginning of the school year, we did a few lessons on the American flag. The students all needed red, white, and blue crayons. And, and instead of having this massive bucket that they had to try to fish through and find red, white, and blue, they can just go over to the crayon buckets and find the red bucket, the white bucket, and the blue bucket. And it saved me, you know, having to, oh, you know, share and, oh, I'll find some for you. Um, just saves the running around and stress and things like that. So those are a few tips that I would have for you that will save you um, a hurting head <laughs> and frustration and um, hopefully save your sanity a little bit. So I hope that you found that helpful. If you have any other questions, drop them below. I will see you next time.